Okay, are we rolling? We're rolling. You probably think that a print is always part of some kind of high-end art museum collection room. Wrong. The print is way more than that. First of all, it isn't just etching and woodcuts and engraving. It's anything that is reproduced in a hard copy. If the printed edition is 10 or 10 million, if it's text or images, it doesn't really matter. It's still a print. If you consider that books and magazines, for example, are just a stack of prints bound together, and they certainly are, the printed page, the printed image, has been a mass medium for the last five centuries in the West, ubiquitous and sometimes disposable. The Chinese invented printmaking in the ninth century while Europeans had mostly collapsed into barbarism. The Chinese brought to it a stunningly high level of technical sophistication, but they didn't really exploit its full potential. It took Europeans 600 years to catch up with Chinese ingenuity, but in 1455, a German inventor named Klaus Gutenberg realized that there was money to be made from cheap reproduction. Since there is nothing more motivating than a paycheck, he devised a breakthrough movable type contraption. A page could be set up, printed, broken down, set up again with a brand new page. He ma mass produced this handsome Bible in Latin, and it was the first bestseller. Before Gutenberg, books were slavishly copied out and illustrated by hand. There were perhaps 100,000 in all of Europe. By 1500, there were 25 million. Printing and printmaking changed everything. Knowledge had been the exclusive property of the scholar, the cleric, the aristocrat. Within a generation, knowledge had been democratized. Woodblock illustrations could be folded into print racks effortlessly, and images became democratic at almost the same time. The Dance of Death, for example, a popular late medieval obsession, was ripe and ready for the popular press. Painted images, unless they were part of a church, were mainly for rich big shots, a kind of conspicuous wealth. Prints were for everybody. The German printmaker Albrecht Dürer cranked out an entire set of imaginative and sensational woodcuts, illustrating the Book of Revelations, the cataclysmic final chapter of the Bible. Here we see our four apocalyptic horsemen, death, famine, war, and pestilence, literally running roughshod over the human race. Or the seven-headed monster of, of the end times, lumbering forth. Durer knew that popular art had to rock if it was going to sell. Prints such as these 17th century etchings started to address humble or domestic themes, a cozy peasant household or the local hurdy-gurdy grinder. Even the high-end artists who usually work for kings they wanted a piece of the action. Famous paintings were reproduced in etchings and engravings and then distributed into the mass market. Until 1800, however, printmaking was still a more or less slow, traditional, laborious business. Prints still had to be prepared, inked, and pulled by hand. In 1796, the invention of lithography changed all of that. Inking and reproduction was suddenly faster, cheaper, and largely mechanical. The first great artist to take advantage of this was Honoré Daumier, who made a living drawing graphics for the journals of Paris about political or topical themes. A great print could now be had for the price of a newspaper. In the 1890s, Honoré de Toulouse-Lautrec popularized full-color lithographic posters. They were bold, evocative, immediate, 
and they were a hit. He promoted the cheap cabarets and absinthe dives in and around Montmartre, the evil Disneyland on the left bank of Paris. Both he and the Montmartre became famous, along with the jazzy prince. By the early 20th century, mechanical offset lithography and vastly improved reproduction technology touched off an explosion in image reproduction. Book illustration, magazines, comics, posters, newspaper graphics, advertising. It was a veritable tsunami of images, not for the museum, but for the person on the street. And it addressed that person's world, that person's concerns, that person's dreams. The museum university establishment as a general thing takes little interest in the humble print, but it is arguably the most powerful, the most persuasive, and the most meaningful medium that has ever existed, simply because it was cheap, it was everywhere, and it spoke to the lives and the interests of millions of people, every day, very directly. A popular graphic has to be immediate, understandable, has to convey a sentiment or visualize a story, or it has to do all of that. But none of that necessarily precludes a graphic from being occasionally anyway very serious and compelling art. This 1834 lithograph by Daumier, for example, documents an atrocity with journalistic power and cogency. 14 civilians were killed, mainly sleeping in their beds by young soldiers in a panic. The digital revolution is the new Gutenberg press, and the age of hard copy is passing. But what that amounts to is entirely up to you.